All right, beachgoers, beware a gigantic stretch of seaweed 5,000 miles wide, about twice the width of the United States, is drifting toward Florida's coast. And it's a seaweed variety called sargasm that forms large, pungent blooms. And this mass could be the largest on record. I'm joined now by hydrologist and environmental engineer, Dr. Tracy Fanara. Uh, doctor, good to see you. So where is this kind of collection of clumps of seaweed right now? Where is it heading? Yeah, so we get a bloom of sargasm every year. It's been going on for hundreds of years. It comes from the North Atlantic, Sargasso Sea, into the Caribbean, and then eventually into the Gulf. We don't know exactly where it will be in peak season and how much of it will, will come to our shores and, and hit our beaches in southwest Florida. But, but this bloom has increased in size, doubled from mm -hmm. December to January, and now is still growing. Okay, so it sounds yucky. It sounds like a nuisance, but there's an upside to this, right? Because it does provide some shelter, maybe even some food to a lot of marine uh, life. So explain, I guess, how Mother Nature sees some real benefits of this sargasm. Oh, yeah. Sargasm patches, they're, they're basically floating and moving ecosystems. They're essential for crabs, juvenile eels, and economically important fish like like amberjacks, jacks, and mahi-mahi. So sargasm plays a huge role in our ecosystem. And then in addition to that, it's a carbon sequestration mechanism as well. Hmm. So then are there also dangers with it? Yeah, well, so it is a non-toxic mm -hmm. macroscopic algae. So it's a non-toxic species. But when it comes to shore in mass amounts, that's when it can be a nuisance and start to be problematic. So it can come to the shore, black out sunlight, so photosynthesis can occur underneath. When these blooms start to die and decompose, they can uptake oxygen, causing something called hypoxic zones or areas with really low to no oxygen, further causing ec ecologic problems. It can suffocate coral reefs, interfere with turtle nesting, and for beachgoers, mm. it can be a pretty gross day at the beach. Right, because it's so fragrant, <laughs> you know, it's just a very yeah. strong, pungent smell. Uh, but I guess for some people with respiratory problems, it can be um, a real problem. Is that true? Uh, yeah, so sulfur dioxide, the, the gas or one of the gases that is released from the dying and decomposing uh, sargasm, it smells like rotten eggs and can give you itchy eyes and respiratory irritation. But what is the one-two punch for Southwest Florida is that we already have an ongoing toxic species of microalgae called Perennia brevis. The blooms are commonly known as Florida red tide. Mm -hmm. So that bloom is already plaguing Southwest Florida. The toxin not only causes mass wildlife death, but can also aerosolize, attach on to sea salt particles in the air, move on shore with winds, causing people to have respiratory irritation mm -hmm. issues and those with asthma or COPD, it can be really serious. So this sarcasm and this red tide are coexisting, uh, you know, in southwest Florida. Do we know whether there's going to be a, you know, a, I guess a, a, a greater integration of those two on one side of the coast versus the other? That's a really great question. So Florida red tide is endemic to the Gulf of Mexico, so it, it mostly impacts the west coast of Florida. Uh -huh. And in June during pea season, when we usually see sargasm come to shore, that's the, that's really the question. Will the Florida red tide bloom still be intense? And will the sargasm interfere with the Florida red tide bloom in the sense that it will outcompete, hopefully, uh, Florida red tide, uh, suffocate Florida red tide? Uh, but if it comes to shore and starts decomposing, it can release nutrients that can feed red tide. So mm. we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, we will indeed. Dr. Tracy Fanara, so glad you could be with us. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me.